Welcome to Northeast Missouri Angler. I'm Dennis and today we're doing something different. I'm out here on the Mark Twain. But these crappie now are all grouped up. They're getting ready. This is their pre-spawn. I'm out here in open water. There's nothing around. There's no structure. But there's probably three, four hundred crappies down here. And they're deep. They're 20, 20 to 30 foot deep. And just sniping them right out in the open. Stick around and see how we did. That one. There we go, right out here in the open. Ain't nothing around. Sucked in about 35 foot of water. Smoking him. Got another one. Sitting here smoking him, buddy. <laughs> They're probably over where you're at right now. I'm just spotlight, just sat here and they're everywhere. There's a hell of a pile of them about 15 foot out from the boat. And as you can see, a buddy of mine, Jason Kaiser, straight three fishing, just pulled up. I called him up and said, get out here, they're out here. <laughs> I see him putting it at the ramp. <laughs> There's one. There he is. <laughs> smoked him. He smoked it. And they're fat. They are fat. Look at this. Look at that. Smoke that thumper. Golden nugget. That blue ice jig from Wild Willies. Jason and I kind of tag teaming these fish. They're, I mean, they are everywhere. There is literally, I bet there's a thousand of them down there in an area about the size of a football field. They gotta be just held up, waiting for the water to warm up, and they're gonna move up in the water. So, that, they're comfortable in that 20 to 30 foot range right now. Water temperature surface is 38 degrees today. So down there, it's, it's a little more stable. Another good one. Good one.
nice one. Not monsters, good eaters. Oh yeah, this is a nice one here. Real nice one. Eleven inch. I mean they're just engulfing it. Nothing more fun when you find them fish that are active, wanting to feed. One thing I do get asked a lot, when catching fish in this deep water, crappie, should, when you bring them up fast, does it kill them? Well, chances are, if you bring them up fast like that, if you're going to keep them, it isn't, it, isn't an op, it isn't an option. It's probably going to affect them when you put them in your live well for any length of time. Just temporarily, it won't really hurt them. But if you're bringing them up out of this water pretty quick and you're going to release them right away, it probably isn't going to damage them. But if you do catch one out of this deeper water and you see it's bleeding and carrying on, it's probably not going to make it. So them you definitely want to try to keep. Uh, hopefully they're big enough in your size range where you want to keep them. But most generally, if you're turning them loose, you're not keeping them for any length of time. In a live well, maybe you want to keep them for a few minutes, take pictures. It probably ain't gonna hurt them as long as you put them back for fairly quick. Nice 11 inch fish. Get the board. Liar's board here, see what it really is. I'm guessing 11. It is, right at, a little over 11. Good one. Another 10 inch fish. Yeah. Matt and Wild Willies sent me a bunch of new baits. He's got a new a new design out. It's kind of like a beaver tail, except it's got a real thin tail. You can see just holding that. There isn't much wind here, but just me holding that, look what that tail's doing. In the water, that, that's, that's just awesome. Now, hitting that ice blue, so I'm gonna try this black with blue tail. Now he's got some colors that I asked him to make up. He's gonna send me. And two colors he's making up for me is a, uh, like a monkey milk type body with a uh, this blue tail and then he's making the same thing except with a red almost pink hot pink tail and all his baits are UV baits so crappie see in the UV spectrum so they, they really pop up in the UV light there he comes he's 
smoked it. He smoked it. That was a good, good, good eater crop. There he is. Not a monster, but he's a fish. There he is. It feels like a better one. Oh yeah, real good. Fish are thick, healthy. What I'm seeing, the reports didn't lie. I think crappie this year for Mark Twain is gonna be another really good year. It's gonna be an abundance of nine inch plus fish. I mean, there's a stack of them, two stacks of them down here look like shad. Laying right on the bottom. And after the new willow leaf, cookies and cream puffer fell head. Better fish. Uh, good eater. Nine-inch fish. Wow, what a day. Can't be a day like I had today. Uh, I was here at the house. It was a nice day. I said, you know, I ain't posted a catfish video in a while. I'm going to go out to the lake, see if I can't catch some catfish for a video. So I load up the boat, put the rods in, just in case I threw one of my crappie rods in. Looking on my depth finder, try to see if there's any shad, balls of shad. See a ball, bunch of shad. So I decide, I'll go ahead, throw this, throw my net now. Just get them now. So, take my net out, drop my live scope in, and try to pinpoint where they're at, throw my net. What was in my net? A couple of crappie. There was thousands of crappie out in the middle, away from anything. There wasn't no structure. They were in 20 to 35 foot of water. They were just everywhere. So I started dropping down on them to see if I could catch them. Sure enough, bam, they were feeding. Just one after the other. And then a friend of mine, Jason with Strike 3 Fishing, calls me. He says, hey, you on the water? I'm like, yeah. I said, well, you ain't going to believe this. I'm catching the hell out of crappie out here in the middle of it. Out here in the middle. There ain't nothing around. He goes, really? I'm like, yes, yeah. there's thousands of them. I said, so he dropped in. Sure enough, as you've seen in the video, we both just sat there in an hour, about an hour and 15 minutes hammered out each one of us had a limit of fish so you know sometimes it's nice to just get lucky and be on them. but uh one thing i try to do i have a group of friends like most people fishes a lot you have your own little clique of friends and you kind of share information about you know where what they're biting on you know i caught them here you know how deep they are i was up at indian you know up in indian or i was over at pigeons roost or i was at north you know, kind of share spots and, and what you're catching them on and whatnot. That way, if you do have a bad day, everybody has one every now and then. You're struggling. You know, you, you have other options other than just places where you fish. You know, granted, you don't want to hoard in on your buddy's fishing spots. You know, that is cool. But 
I don't know of anybody that's a friend of mine, if I'm having a rough day and they've been catching one after another and they're fishing over here and I, there's spots over there that I know they've been catching them at and they're not there, I know they won't care if I go over and knock out some fish, you know. And same way with me. I don't mind sharing my places I know where they're at and where I usually find them. When I'm having a hot week or whatnot, somebody else, one of my friends is struggling, it doesn't bother me at all if they want to go over and have a good day, you know. So, you know, Jason is uh, known him since we was in grade school and just good friend. And he's one of them. We kind of share knowledge back and forth and kind of tag team the lake on certain things whenever we're, we're, we're uh, either take a break for a while or just have a struggle fest for a day or two. Oh, um, and that's nice that you have friends you can do that with. But yeah, so as you've seen, we tag teamed up on them crappie. Nailed them, got our limits, and it was a great day. Can't you can't beat that? So remember, hey, if you like what you watched, hit the subscribe button. If you hit that subscribe button, hit the bell right next to it, and it'll notify you when I post these videos. As always, thanks for watching. Until next time.